Jamal Khalifa has just opened his first restaurant in the ancient port city of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. But Khalifa is not famous for his seafood. To the West, he's a terrorist mastermind, the man who made Al-Qaeda in Southeast Asia and bin Laden's best friend. We became more than brothers. Even his brothers, they don't mingle with him more than I do. So we were really very close friends to each other. And almost we did not separate the whole day, the whole time we were together. Outside of Saudi Arabia, Khalifa is a wanted man. He's already been arrested and interrogated three times in three countries. The FBI still believe he's the man that got away. Khalifa does admit to keeping bad company, but he says the evidence against him is all just circumstantial. I am telling everybody, come and talk. I, 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 I'm, I'm not hiding, I'm not escaping, I am, not, I am here. I am welcoming everybody to come and talk and say, and, and if I did anything wrong, I am really putting myself and said, okay, get, come and punish me. Khalifa is a likely suspect. He became bin Laden's best friend while they were both at university. Their ties were cemented when Khalifa took bin Laden's sister Sheikha as his second wife. The bin Laden he knew then, Khalifa says, was a man to be respected. Osama was a very normal person, very humble and a very simple person. Osama also he is very polite quiet person. He forced you to respect him from his attitude. Uh, he is not a person who is uh, aggressive. He is not a person who is uh, um, even thinking to hit any person even by word. He is really selecting his word, very careful when he's talking. He's a really nice guy, a very nice guy. Khalifa says he's not working with his best friend anymore. He condemns the terrorist attacks of September 11 and says the bin Laden he knew does not match the image of him today. Osama always, actually, he is my best friend. He is my, more than my brothers. I loved him very much, up to now. Uh, yes, I'm not agree about what, what he's doing, but still, he is a friend. Okay, um, and even if I have, really I say that many times, I'm saying it, if I have any power to stop him, I will do. But the FBI and CIA don't believe Khalifa's story. It was here in Jeddah, they say, he and bin Laden hatched a plan to globalise Al-Qaeda. Bin Laden and Khalifa fell under the influence of the radical Muslim cleric Abdullah Azam in the early 1980s. Western intelligence sources credit Azam as being one of the founders of Al-Qaeda. He urged Saudi youth to martyr themselves in the fight against the Soviets in Afghanistan. I met Dr Abdullah Azam in Osama's house. So he started to talk to us that we have to go, we have to help, we have to give this effort, and this is a duty, it's uh, helping our brothers there. So we decided to go. Uh, then I went, he used to go, I think, before, ahead of me, me, but he go and come back like this. I also went in uh, 1985, January 1st. 1985, I was in the plane because I remember they serve us for the new year. And that's the first time I saw wine in my life. <laughs> it was in Afghanistan in the mid-1980s that Khalifa claims he and bin Laden started to move in different directions. Khalifa says his jihad was more about humanitarian work. Then uh, Osama actually made the one camp, they call it Al-Ma'sada camp. 
uh, Ma'asadat means the, the place of uh, the, the, the house of the lions Okay, so the lions were there uh, So he started to group the, the Arab volunteers coming to jihad in that camp uh, the, the camp became big this was the beginning of Al-Qaeda, and it was at this point, Khalifa says, he had a falling out with bin Laden, who was now starting his plans to internationalise his jihad. So I went there, then we start the, uh, the, the last days, we start to talk, me and Osama, because nobody can face him. Uh, so our arguments became a little bit tough with each other. Uh, so we reached to a point that no agreement. I was telling him that you have to leave this place, you have to send those people back, you have to dismantle everything here and go, because this is dangerous, this is nobody like it, this is nobody agree about it, uh, uh, you are changing the direction of our goal and objectives here, so please. But Osama, he did not uh, listen. Um, uh, I was really thinking that if I told him that I will leave you, I will separate from you, I will do some, maybe he will come with me, but uh, never. He said, okay, this is my way, this is your way, go away. So from that time, 1986, almost the end of 1986, within that time, I separated from him and mm. that's it from that time up to now. You know, bin Laden did not change uh, himself. He was committed to waging this jihad back in the uh, mid-1980s. And already he was espousing a very virulent uh, anti-Americanism at the time. Zakaria Yabuza is an authority on al-Qaeda in Southeast Asia and has just published a book on al-Qaeda's networks in the region. Uh, I just do not believe that that Khalifa could have been caught by surprise uh, by bin Laden's attempt to globalize his uh, jihad and turn al-Qaeda into an internationalist organization. In fact, Western analysts agree that Jamil Khalifa was dispatched to the Philippines to set up al-Qaeda in Southeast Asia. The FBI and the CIA who declined to be interviewed for this program, believe he established al-Qaeda's operations by using Islamic charities and legitimate businesses as a cover. He played such a very important role in establishing the infrastructure for terrorist activities, the charities, the front companies, uh, uh, recruiting people, really establishing a very thorough network. The FBI say Khalifa started his first big operation in Manila in the early 1990s. He helped organize and fund a terrorist cell of about 20 people. Their plan, known as 48 Hours of Terror, was until then Al-Qaeda's most ambitious. They were to assassinate the Pope on his visit to the Philippines in 1995 and simultaneously hijack a dozen US passenger jets, crashing them into the Pacific Ocean, the Pentagon and CIA headquarters. Many see this as a blueprint for September 11. According to the FBI, bomb-making expert Ramsey Youssef, later convicted of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, was brought in for the job. Khalifa denies any involvement in the plan and says he never met Ramzi Yusuf, even though his business cards were found in the apartment where Yusuf was preparing the bombs. What did they found with Ramzi Yusuf? My calling card. I am a businessman. I am a, a, a head of a very big organization. Plenty of people come and meet me, I give them my card. So now, if I give you your card, be careful. Ramzi Youssef was not in the Philippines to do charitable work. Um, he was uh, there to conduct a major terrorist operation against the United States. And I don't see what business he would have 
uh, having simply the business card of uh, the head of a large charity there. <laughs> Khalifa says he went to the Philippines to work as an Islamic missionary. He was in charge of the Muslim World League, a legitimate charity. No one disputes that Khalifa did much good work here in the south of the Philippines. But it's his ten other businesses and private charities that are at the centre of allegations that he funded terrorists like Ramzi Yusuf. Zachariah Bouza has strong connections to Western intelligence agencies and says Khalifa's information and research centre was a front. The International Research and Information Centre, uh, which was directed by his brother-in-law, Abu Amir, uh, he uh, used that as the primary funding vehicle for Ramzi Youssef. And you can be absolutely sure that none of that money was used in any type of terrorist operation? I am not only sure, I am, I am sure and I am challenging if anybody can just give us one single cent goes to any of those people. But Look, Khalifa does admit to knowing Wali Khan, the office, other ringleader in the plot. But once again, he says he can explain the connection. Wali Khan, he was uh, a student in the high school where I was teaching in Medina. Okay, then this guy, he is not a Saudi, he is actually from Uzbekistan. When the, the Afghan problem happened, so he decided to go and, and uh, join the Afghan. Uh, so he went there, he was in Afghanistan, and in, uh, I think he came to the Philippines 90s, I think 93 or 92, some, sometimes like this, I'm not sure. So when he came to the Philippines, whom do you think he will contact? Of course, I am his teacher. And in the same time, even if I am not his teacher, I am the director of Muslim World League. Anybody coming there, you will contact me. At about the same time as the 48 hours of terror plot was being thwarted in the Philippines, Khalifa was arrested for visa violations on a visit to America in December 1994. On him, they found documents that the FBI released to the Philippines intelligence explaining jihad and the wisdom of assassinating priests, bombing churches and martyrdom operations. But the documents were not directly related to the terrorist plot. They go to my offices, search every single papers, uh, questions, everybody trying to get anything it's a challenge. So they come out with zero, nothing at all. After four months in a US jail, the authorities decided to extradite Khalifa to Jordan, where he had been convicted in absentia of financing a terrorist cell. They rendered him to uh, Jordan. And the reason they did so was they did not believe that they had enough evidence or a jury would, would be as convinced by the evidence uh, linking him to terrorist groups in Southeast Asia. A death sentence was awaiting Khalifa in Jordan. He was convicted of a plot to bring down the government through a bombing campaign and assassinating the Prime Minister. Khalifa denies any knowledge of the plan, but once again just happens to know one of the key planners. I employ him, he's a Jordanian, and he came to teach in one of my schools in the Philippines. I get him, so he was under, I mean, uh, uh, for three months trial. If he's okay, so then we will continue. So uh, less than uh, three months, we discovered that this guy, he is not capable to do the job. So we return him back. This guy, I think he went there and he group a small group, then they make a small bomb and put it in the cinema. Um, even the one they give it to, to him, he took the, the bomb and put it under his chair and he liked the film. He continues watching the film, then it explodes to him and cut his legs. So they said, when 
they start to question this guy, where were you before that, this time? They, he said, I was in the Philippines, working in this place. Who is the director there? He said, Mr. Khalifa, he is, who is he? He is like this. He is the in-law of Osama bin Laden. He is a Saudi. Oh, very nice story. Very nice. Khalifa says he was set up, and in Jordan on a retrial, the sentence was overturned. Once more, Khalifa had managed to elude conviction. Back at his fish restaurant, Khalifa is relaxed. He knows Western intelligence agencies have no solid proof against him. The critical question for those pursuing him is how the money flows through his charities and how much of it, if any, is used for terrorist operations. He's a very smart man. I think he knew how to cover his tracks and, and to uh, make sure that most everything he did was overt um, and above board. Uh, some of his dealings were, were, were covert and uh, he did a very good job in covering his tracks and, and making sure that there were six degrees of separation between him and the other actors. But perhaps most damaging for Khalifa is the evidence of his key role in setting up and funding the Abu Sayyaf in 1991. The radical Islamic group, based in the southern Philippines, has become infamous for kidnapping and beheading Western hostages. The US has listed them as a terrorist organisation with links to Al-Qaeda and has deployed its troops in the Philippines to help wipe out the group. A series of former rebels have come forward to say that Abu Sayyaf was Khalifa's creation. Jerry Salapuddin, ex-rebel and now Deputy Speaker of the Philippines Congress, says Khalifa was the money man. You, you, I don't know him exactly, but I, I'm saying the same thing. So why, my question to them again, why government, the Philippine government up to now, they did not file case? against me. Wahab Akbar, another ex-rebel and now governor of Basilan, says Khalifa set up the Abu Sayyaf. This guy, he used to, he was a very poor guy. And he used to stay in my house in Manila sometimes. Believe me, just to feed him. And as I'm saying, those people, when they, he, imagine some person, he is from the street, then he jumped to be uh, a governor, and he wants to please the government, what he will say. Khalifa's case points to the difficulty America faces in trying to break up Al-Qaeda's infrastructure. If he is the real terrorist mastermind, the proof lies buried deep with Al-Qaeda's inner circle, which remains largely intact. I think it's going to be very hard to, to, to prosecute, especially people like him, the, the, the money men. And perhaps that's why in over uh, 13 months right now, 14 months, uh, so little Al-Qaeda money has actually been uh, 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 confiscated. To my knowledge, only some $113 million in terrorist funding has been uh, seized since September 11th. Um, and many of the charities uh, that uh, Khalifa has been established, uh, uh, affiliated with or established himself are still up and operating. It's very difficult for these governments to uh, shut these down. As Khalifa awaits the arrival of his customers, there is no hint of the suspected international terrorist. But again, he's preparing for another court case. In an attempt to stop terrorist funding, some of the victims of September 11th are trying to shut down Islamic charities. This includes a multi-million dollar lawsuit against Khalifa and other prominent Saudis. The case has yet to come to court, and Khalifa says the plan will backfire. And what the American and the West doing now Again, it's the charity organization in Saudi Arabia. It is very, very dangerous for them. Look, they are filing a case against those charity organizations and they keep in talking here and there. So they want what? 
they want this organization to close. They want it to not to help anybody. What do they want exactly? If they want it to shut down and close, it means that if you have one Osama bin Laden in the world, you will have millions. Because those charity organizations, they are feeding millions of people all over the world. And those people are, were uh, poor people. They are jobless. These or, these, those organizations giving them food, giving them jobs. When you took the food from their mouth, what do you expect? He will ask a question, who stopped this organization? They will tell him the American. Okay, let, let any American move after that. Despite years of scrutiny, Khalifa is currently not on the US most wanted list. The FBI says simply he's still under investigation. His case shows just how difficult it will be for America to win its war on terror.